Welcome back, everyone. This is Dragothian here. In our stream on Friday, we went ahead and went over the attack talent tree and maybe a different way of going about things, specifically when it comes to the talent effortless. Let's get into the video here. What we're going to do is we're going to break down what this actually does and is it actually beneficial for you in a real world fighting situation? Stay tuned. All right, welcome back everybody. Again, before we get started, make sure you hit that like button, throw a subscribe if you haven't done so already. This is a sponsored content creation channel for Rise of Kingdoms. Wanna make sure you hit the bell notification too so you get your daily updates on streams and videos that come out every single day for Rise of Kingdoms on this channel. Totally free, totally up to you. Let's talk about Effortless because again, on this channel, you're, it's all about fighting in the real world we're not talking about 1v1 we're not talking about canyon we're not talking about middle fight arc of osiris this is real world combat in kvk season of conquest kvk one two three doesn't matter kvk fighting which to me is the bulk of what you're going to be doing in the game from a fighting standpoint where it really matters you know you talk about arc right that happens every two weeks so cyrus league it's every week but it's only for an hour. <laughs> KVK is for a month and a half, almost two months of your time. And it happens pretty quickly if you have a kingdom that likes to not skip very much from a uh, skipping your invitation standpoint. That being in mind, we've, we've talked about Leo and how Leo on paper looks really good, but doesn't really meet the criteria for a quality fighting commander when you actually put his skills on the field in a KVK situation. Same thing with CJ. Um, there's other commanders that come to mind, but now let's talk about some of the talents that are kind of in the same boat where this has always been a stalwart and standard build for like, say, a William here, for instance. We have almost the full cav tree and we have the attack tree here at the bottom. And sometimes people will sacrifice some points over here to put three points into unyielding for an extra one and a half percent counterattack damage, et cetera. But you generally avoid martial mastery in any skill damage situation. Uh, Victory Charge, I'm going to be testing in this KBK a little bit with a different build that I'll show you in this video. But let's talk about the Effortless Talent. This is something that everybody has always gotten. If you're using an Attack Tree Commander as a primary commander, Effortless, and again, this has been my recommendation for three plus years, you got to have it, right? Well, let's take a look at it and actually think about how this applies to a normal KVK traditional fight, which again is a murder ball or a big fight where you're going back and forth and back and forth, hitting for a few seconds, coming back, hitting for a few seconds and coming back, swarming a target, coming back, swarming a target, you know what I'm saying? So let's look at Effortless, let's read it, let's understand it, and then let's kind of figure out, is this something that you actually should put your points into in a talent build versus, say, somewhere else? So Effortless, let's read it, during battles increases all damage dealt by 2.5% every 10 seconds up to a maximum of 10%. That's a huge talent. And again, this is why effortless was so universally like you got to have it because a 10% all damage buff. Yes, please sign me up, uh, hit the checkbox and move on about your day. Well, when it says during battles increases all damage dealt by two and a half percent every 10 seconds, that's the piece that we need to kind of analyze and say, is this really the way we want to go? Um, is this really a talent that we need to use when we're fighting on the battlefield? And when would this talent, I guess another thing to talk about really quickly towards the end of the video is when should you use this talent? Uh, because it is a strong talent. It's not a bad talent. It's just how should you use it, right? So for the majority of a KBK, again, you're open field fighting. There is rallies, there is garrisons, but again, the majority of your um, fighting in a KBK, real battle combat fighting, is open field. And in this situation, effortless, in my opinion, is actually not that great. Um, again, you, you are going back and forth. You're attacking, you're pulling back, you're attacking, you're pulling back, you're maneuvering to the side to attack and then pull back. Like you're not sitting there and going smash and then letting all your commanders die. Like that's just not how you should be fighting. At least if you are fighting that way, this talent could help you, but I think you need more help than just this talent. At that point, you need to go and see some of my videos on how I battle in the open field. 
how I recommend you do fight in the open field with your marches and maybe tweak some things because you shouldn't be just throwing your troops in the middle of a fight and then saying, YOLO, I'm done, this is over. That's where the effortless talent would actually start to actually have some value in the open field. But for people who actually manage their marches, which is 99.9% .9 of you, this actually doesn't seem to be worth the points because it's actually eight points to get this talent. Three to get the uh, attack all troops, two to get the march speed all troops, and then the effortless skill here of three. So that's eight points to get the effortless skill maxed out. To me, not worth it. You're talking about being in a battle, right, where you're going back and forth. Increases all damage dealt by 2.5% every 10 seconds. So at most, I feel like at most, you could possibly get 2.5% uh, damage. And that's only for like a second or two. And then you're going to be pulling back. Now, you can rage cycle. and that's the, that's the practice of being able to have a target that you're targeting with your swarm, right? And then have another target ready prepared, which is a good practice to have. And then switch to it as soon as you're done killing it or as it's almost dead, right? So that you're, you're cycling your, your rage bar from a current target where it's at 75%. You switch to the other target that's right beside you and you maintain that rage bar. That's a rage cycle, okay? Well, you can do that and this would still apply. Effortless would work there. But again, that's not generally the norm. Like sometimes that will happen, but sometimes majority of the time i would say you 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 lose your rage bar which means that you've disengaged from combat which means that effortless is now back at zero which means that you need to attack for another 10 seconds just to get back to the two and a half percent that this first tick provides okay so again and more often than not you're not even attacking for 10 seconds you're attacking for six seconds you're attacking for seven seconds a lot of your skill damage commanders are going to be firing off their at least their first skill in that seven, eight second range, if you're really good with the horn or Kerouac's war drum or all the talent trees or feral nature proccing or whatever, right? You're going to be firing those off before the 10 second timer. And again, you're going to fire it off. And if you're getting swarmed, you're going to pull back, which is normally what happens when you go to attack a, an army in open field combat in KVK. So to me, again, the way that I'm looking at this effortless, should you use this as an open field commander primary talent? No, in my opinion, you shouldn't. What I've done is I've switched up my talent build for William. Now, on Friday's stream, I showed this talent build. And again, I want to test out how Victory Charge does because I need to see if this goes away after you kill a march or if you truly do get the 10 second, full 10 seconds of 6% attack bonus um, from Victory Charge. Now, even if it does work, is 6% attack in KVK really worth it? I don't know. I'm actually going to start with this build here, which gives me more bonuses to true murder ball and open field fighting than anything else that I could come up with inside of a build like this. So again, you have the rallying cry giving a 15% all damage bonus the first 10 seconds after entering battle. Again, that's awesome. And again, in this situation, you actually want to attack for 10 seconds and then peel back and then attack for 10, 10 seconds. And then peel back. That's what you want to do with Rallying Cry. And 15% all damage dealt is way better than Effortless giving you up to 10%, but you only get this in 40 seconds. <laughs> it takes 40 seconds to get up to the full 10%. Same thing over here when it comes to uh, Fight to the Death. This is all the time. This is not a timed thing or anything like that. Victory Charge, however, again, is when you, when you defeat an army belonging to another governor, attack is increased by 6%. For the next 10 seconds where again effortless requires a timing component to actually start to stack everything up to actually get the maximum damage that you're thinking you're getting all the time but you're really not getting you're really not getting that and i also added equestrian excellence which is usually something that i generally avoid but again in a murder ball situation an extra 15 percent march speed 10 percent chance to increase march speed by 15 percent for two seconds this will proc off quite often I would imagine. And then again, when you're attacking somebody for anywhere between four and eight, 10 seconds, this will proc off. You'll be able to peel back faster, which means you're not going to get that last nuke that that guy's firing off on you. You'll go away. He won't be able to hit you and you're going to get all your damage done and then not take any of their damage in return. I think this actually could be from a murder ball standpoint, a very underrated talent. We're going to make sure we use that 
in the upcoming KVK against 960, which is going to be very, very strong. Can't wait to bring you daily videos and streams on that once the fighting actually starts. But this, to me, again, is the way to go from an attack tree standpoint. This should be the new meta on attack tree when it comes to open field fighting. Now, when do we use effortless going forward? Now that we kind of understand truly how effortless works and that it doesn't really necessarily lend itself well to being in a murder ball fight because, again, it takes too long to get that percentage up to a, a respectable number for how many points it takes to get. And again, in real world combat, you'll never be fighting somebody for 40 seconds at a time. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't work that way in KBK combat. You just don't do that. You'll see this in 1v1s. You'll definitely see this in arc. Certainly in the middle fights, you'll definitely see this. You want to have effortless. You'll see this in Canyon as well. Great Canyon talent uh, because, again, you're nonstop fighting. It's, it's the way the, the, the system is structured that way. But for open field, it's just not worth it. Now, for rallies and garrisons, yes, this does apply. Again, you're going to be rallying or garrisoning against those two things for longer than 40 seconds. So you definitely want to have effortless. If you have an attack tree primary commander as a garrison or a rally leader, effortless is definitely a must have because this is an extra 10% damage that you will have after 40 seconds of your rally or your garrison defense. So this is definitely worthwhile to have in those situations. But from a murder ball open field standpoint, this is just not worth it. It's just not going to give you what you're asking for. And again, eight points to get there gives you so much more points elsewhere. You can go ahead and pick up unyielding. You can go ahead and pick up equestrian excellence. You can go ahead and pick up this extra 1% health on the calf tree that you usually avoid because you forget about it, one. And two, um, it's just there and you don't have any extra points because you put all your points to get effortless, which again has been the general recommendation of this channel for quite some time. But again, I'm looking at the, the, the game from a real world standpoint. I always have tried to do that, but really trying to get into the minutia, into the details with you all. So you know what to use in certain situations in this game, because it is starting to become a very minutia driven game where you need to have the right gear. You need to have the right talent build. You need to have the right commander pairings. You need to have everything pristine so that you can have the most effective pairings on the field and rallies and garrisons, etc. It's It's very much becoming a details-driven game. So I want to make sure that you know about Effortless because this is something that I was thinking about the other day as I was setting up my builds to, uh, to get ready for the 960K. I'm like, let's go through these talents and make sure that I'm really going to be using all these things because, again... I haven't really dug deep into these these talent trees um, since really the beginning of the game because they haven't changed. They haven't really changed any of the talent trees except bringing out the engineering talent tree with the two commanders you get and heroic anthem power up, which hopefully you guys don't have to go through that because it's bad right now. But um, I think that's really the, the play here. So again, effortless only for rallies, only for garrisons, only for canyon, only for arc. Um, and again, only for one-on-one -on -one fights, which again, if that's what you're doing with your life, you know, more power to you. Um, that's either feeding or that's testing. So, and again, testing in 1v1s, in my opinion, is just pointless because, again, like you can see here, a talent like uh, a talent like Effortless performs beautifully in a 1v1 fight, whereas on the open field in actual combat, it doesn't perform nearly as well. And again, maximum efficiency of this in open field actual combat is only 25% if you get that first proc to actually go off. And again, it's only for one or two seconds before, again, you're going to be peeling back and resetting your timer anyway. So again, I think this is the way to go. To me, this is the build you should be using on any attack tree going forward. This is this one right here. This is your play. This gives you fight to the death, which is a 6% all damage dealt bonus. You get your rage buff of burning blood, which again, you need as much rage as possible on the attack tree because there is no rejuvenate, okay? You also have unyielding a 1.5% counterattack damage dealt bonus and armored joints reducing all damage taken by 1.5%. I also added a half percent of health here as well because I only had one point left after I did all the other stuff that I wanted to do here. And that's that. I think that's the way that you should go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it's been helpful for you all. I'll see you guys in the stream very soon later today where we will be streaming two monster KVKs, 846 versus 365, and then 93, and 671, versus 860, and 34. I'll see you guys there 
The stream's already up. Make sure you go throw a like before you join in on that stream. It'll be starting at 15.15 UTC. I'll see you guys then. Cheers. Have a good one. And take care.